Good morning this Wednesday, the 5th of June. I'm Grady Wolf, Market Analyst with Bell Direct. Wall Street closed higher on Tuesday across the key indices amid a decline in Treasury yields and ahead of key jobs data out on Friday. The Dow Jones rose 0.36%, the S&P 500 added 0.15% and the tech-heavy Nasdaq climbed 0.17% on Tuesday. Investors are eagerly awaiting the release of key non-farm payrolls data out on Friday for the month of May with hopes of an ease in the number of people currently employed in the US to support the Fed's interest rate cut outlook, but not a major decline as that would spark recession fears. In Europe, overnight markets closed lower across the region as investors await the European Central Bank's rate decision out on Thursday to see if the inflation print for the region that came in hotter than expected last Friday deters the ECB from cutting rates, which is widely expected. The stock 600 fell 0.5% as mining stocks weighed on the bourse, while Germany's DAX fell one. 0.09%. The French CAC lost 0.75%. And in the UK, the FTSE 100 ended the day down 0.37%. Across the Asia markets on Tuesday, India's stock market tumbled 5% as the country continued voting for its 2024 election, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng rose 0.12% on Tuesday. South Korea's Kospi index shed 0.76%. And Japan's Nikkei ended the day down 0.22%. Weakened commodity prices and a mixed session in the US on Monday. Monday caused the ASX to reverse Monday's gains to post a 0.31% decline on Tuesday. A sharp slide in energy stocks weighed on the local index following the 3.75% drop in the price of oil yesterday as the markets digested OPEC Plus's further production cut announcement. While financial stocks closed 0.23% higher to offset some of the heavy losses on the index yesterday. A positive crop outlook forecast from the Australian Bureau of Agricultural and Resource Economic and Sciences, or ABES, fueled a rally for some agricultural stocks yesterday, including Grain Corp, which climbed at 4.8%. The report detailed national winter crop production is set to increase to 51.3 million tonnes, which is a 9% increase on the last financial year. Gold miners also climbed on Tuesday amid a rise in the price of the precious commodity driven by rate cut outlook in the US. The declining price of iron ore on weakened Chinese property sector outlook hit the local iron ore miners yesterday, with BHP is sliding 1.18%, while Fortescue fell 1.86%, and Champion Iron tumbled 5.2%. All eyes locally today will be on the release of Australia's GDP growth rate data for Q1, which is out at 11.30am Eastern Time, with economists expecting a second consecutive reading of 0.2% growth, which would reflect softer economic growth. Australia's trade balance data for April is also out on Thursday, with the forecast of the country's trade surplus to improve slightly to $5.5 billion from $5.024 billion in March. On the commodities front this morning, oil is trading a further 1.78% lower at $72.89 a barrel. Gold is down just over 1% at $2,326 an ounce. And iron ore is down a steep 6.31% at $110.10 a tonne. One Aussie dollar has, uh, the Aussie dollar, sorry, has slightly weakened weakened overnight to buy 66 US cents, 102.88 Japanese yen, 51.98 British pence and one New Zealand dollar and eight cents. Ahead of the midweek session here in Australia, the SPY futures are anticipating the ASX to open the day down just 0.06%. And now let's dive into some trading ideas for your consideration this Wednesday. Bell Potter has maintained a buy rating on Grain Corp and raised the 12 month price target from $9.50 to $9.90 following the release of the ABARES June report for the East Coast forecast report, surprising upside on potential. The ABEAR forecast implies another strong cropping outcome for Grain Corp in FY25, with the initial June forecast implying the fifth largest crop on record. And Bell Potter has maintained a hold rating on Sinlay Milk and decreased the 12-month price target from $0.66 cents to $0.47 cents after the milk processing company released a further FY24 update downgrading FY24 EBITDA expectations to the lower end of guidance, reflecting lower ingredients values and inventory impairments. And that's all for this morning. Have a wonderful Wednesday and as always, happy investing.